Hey, welcome to Andre Butler Ministries. I'm excited to hang out with our partners this month. And if you're not a partner and you're watching this, you're still going to get something good out of this. But of course, Andre Butler Ministries is a ministry that is focused on helping people experience the future God has for them. It's a national and international ministry. So we're ministering to people primarily through the internet all over the world, through our Sunday experiences, on social media, when we have speaking opportunities. I just spoke in Arkansas last month. I'll be in Arizona next month. Uh, to other things, other ways. For example, we have our own film that's right now in the process of being distributed. And so I'm excited about what God has done and I'm excited about what he's about to do. And if you're a partner, I want to say thank you because your giving and your praying has made a difference. I'm, I'm often getting uh, messages or hearing stories about people's lives being changed as a result of them coming in contact with this ministry. And you're going to get rewarded for that in heaven as well as here on earth. Today, I want to share a message with you that's really dear to my heart. I feel like I'm living here. So I'm going to read in Exodus chapter 14. And of course, if you know this story, and most people who know this story, even if you don't know God, you don't believe in the Bible, you know about uh, God parting the Red Sea for Israel. And so in this story, of course, we know that Israel had been slaves for over 400 years in Egypt, that God caused many miracles to happen so that Egypt would finally let them go. And they did. They were released from Egypt and they left with silver and gold and there was no one sick among them. So it was a healing miracle, a financial miracle and a deliverance miracle all at the same time. And so we get to chapter 14 and we find Israel not through the Red Sea yet. Right. They've gotten out of Egypt, but they're in this in between place, the in between. And if I had to give a message to this, it would be living a title, excuse me, to this. I would be living in the in between because that's where they were. They were between Egypt and, you know, getting through the Red Sea, the promised land. We can call it that ultimately. And so uh, in chapter 14 in verse one, it says, the Lord speak unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Piharoth between Migdal and the sea over against Bel Zephon before it shall ye encamp by the sea. And then he says, of course, what's gonna happen? Pharaoh's gonna come after you etc., etc., And of course, that's exactly what Moses did. He had them to encamp against Baal Zephon. So once again, Egypt, excuse me, Israel is between Egypt and the Red Sea. They have come out of Egypt, which was a miracle. In fact, it took a bunch of miracles, but they have not gotten away from Pharaoh just yet. If you keep reading this, you know that Pharaoh and his army come chasing after Israel, and it looks bad. I mean, Israel looks like they are in serious trouble, and they panic. They say, man, Moses, you have left us in, in Egypt because now we're going to die. Pharaoh and his army are going to kill us. And Moses, of course, goes to God about it. And when he goes to God about it, uh, the Lord ultimately says to him, you know, lift up your rod and stretch out your hand and uh, divide the sea. And of course, the children of Israel will go on dry ground through it. And we know the rest of the story that that's what happened. And so there's a couple of things that we can get from this. And I think that it's important for us to really listen to this. Uh, when you're sitting in that phase between uh, when God having done some miracles, but you not still being where you need God to take you, you can panic. Because what happens is Satan gives you or he launches his greatest attacks. That's when it just looks the worst. And it, you feel like, you know, I made a mistake even believing God in the first place. I made a mistake trying to do things God's way in the first place. And you, you just can't give in to that. One of the things that God expects you to do is to have a flashback. In fact, you'll see God say this to his people oftentimes. Don't you remember when I did this and when I did that and how I delivered you from this and how I delivered you from that? And, and I won't read all the scriptures to you, but that's the point. And he would say, you know, I expect you to remember that I was the God who did that for you before and therefore believe that I'm the God who will do it for you now. And that is what God expects. If you're sitting in the in-between between God having gotten you out and God having God bringing you in, you got to remember that God got you out that you were in a rough position before, right? That there were things that looked like were not gonna work out before, and yet here you are. Here you are, and you know, you're still standing. Here you are, and you're still healthy. You're still able to walk and talk and function. Here you are, and guess what? You're not bankrupt. Here you are, and you're still in ministry. Whatever it is, 
God has done some miracles for you before, and the same God that was for you then is for you now. And God expects you to remember that, to keep that in mind. He expects you also, number two, to not be afraid. That's what Israel did. They panicked. They panicked and, and they said, you know, Moses, you should have left us in Egypt. We're about to die. And we got to watch that. We got to watch that go back to Egypt mentality where we're questioning what God has done in our lives, questioning whether or not we should have left the place that God delivered us from. No, you cannot go back to Egypt. Even if you went back, it just wouldn't be the same. Why? You know more now. You've tasted more. And you know God has a future for you. And you'll never be satisfied with your past. So you got to make a decision and shift your focus. Stop focusing on what you see coming your way and start focusing on the fact that God's about to do his greatest miracle in your life. And that is the third thing, is that at some point you've got to kind of lift your rod. You've got to make a decision, in your case, to lift your hands and praise God for what you know he is about to do. Because that's a, the greatest expression of faith is when you praise God and say, I thank you, Father, you're delivering me from this. I thank you, Father, that I'm already set free. I thank you, Father, that I'm going into my promised land. As Psalm 66, 12 says, we went through fire and we went through water, but you brought us out into a wealthy place. So take that position. Thank you, Father. I'm going into my wealthy place. I'm going into my place of satisfaction. I am coming out of this particular trap. I'm coming out of the in-between and I'm going into the future God has for me. And when you take that position, when you decide to have a flashback, when you decide to not fear, and when you decide to praise God for your victory, where you're about to walk through your Red Sea, and you're going to do what Moses and his people did. They danced and they sang. They celebrated what God did for them. And I believe the same thing is going to happen for you. I want to encourage you, if you're a partner, as you give this month, to make sure that you do so through AndreButler.com, but then make sure that you do so in love and in faith. Number one, God has us give because he wants to use us to be a blessing to other people. It's because of somebody else's giving that you're saved today and you're watching this and you're able to talk about good things God's done in your past. Number two, God tells us to give so he can get harvest to us. And some people struggle with that. God wanted to prosper you financially, call it prosperity gospel. No, it's the Bible. The Bible says, give and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men, men give into your bosom, that when you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. So believe God for that, that God's going to multiply every single seed you have sown for him and thank God for it and then watch him do just that. And so as you prepare to give, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father, for the privilege and honor of being a blessing to you and to others through our giving. Thank you that because of our giving, people all over this world will hear about the future that you have for them through Jesus. We thank you also. Your word promises us that when we give, you'll give us not just back what we gave, but a running over return. So we ask for our return and believe we receive it now. Satan, we command you to take your hands off of it and angels go forth and bring our return into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got a couple great things going on at Andre Butler Ministries I want to mention to you. We've started just recently, maybe last couple of months, our video devotional. So a couple times a month, or week, excuse me, you can get a short message from me just to encourage you throughout your day. Sign up for that at AndreButler.com. I do have the privilege of speaking at Faith Christian Center in Phoenix, Arizona, the church I literally started at in terms of pastoring. Uh, when I was 21 years old, it's their 25-year anniversary. So that's going to be on October 2nd. So stay tuned for that information, particularly if you're in the Phoenix area. We'd love to see you there as well. And then once again, continue to believe God with us. Our movie Match Made is is in the process of being distributed. We're in the middle of the distribution process, let's call it that. And so believe God with us for favor. I believe that God's going to use it to impact a lot of lives and also cause his ministry to be in position to do even more for him. I love you guys. I will catch up with you next month and know that God has a future for you.